Hello, my name is Matt Ballard, and I'm a solution engineer on Esri's natural resources team. I'm pleased to welcome you to today's webinar entitled Achieving Location Intelligence with Drones in ArcGIS. I'll be your MC for today's webinar. This webinar was organized in collaboration with the Esri Mining User Group. A recording of this webinar will be posted on YouTube and shared with all of the registrants. Throughout this webinar, we highly encourage you to ask questions through the GoToWebinar question dialog box. We'll try to answer as many as possible, and we'll also provide a list of answers in the follow-up email to all the registrants. We appreciate everybody joining today's webinar, especially given the unprecedented coronavirus situation. For the next hour, we're going to focus on educating our mining community in hopes that it at least brings some light relief and distraction from the current situation. Later in the webinar, before the question and answer session, I will be taking a moment to share some resources that Esri is developing to help you and your organization respond to the coronavirus outbreak that you may wish to use for business or personal reasons. With that, let's go back to the webinar. So in addition to myself, I'm also joined by John Blackmore, Mapping and Survey Supervisor at Luxstone, and Patrick Hess, GIS Analyst at Luxstone. Nico Bonifu, who works on Esri's Global Business Development Imagery and Remote Sensing Team, will also be joining us in this webinar. Now, before beginning, I'd like to say just a few quick words about the Esri Mining User Group, or the MUG. The MUG serves four primary purposes. First is a professional networking organization who's focused on the geospatial professionals in the mining industry. Second, the MUG is the community that's able to provide feedback to Esri in a mining context. Esri wants to know what's most important to our customers in the mining industry. The MUG also works to coordinate seminars and networking events at mining conferences and the Esri User Conference. For example, recently the MUG hosted events at PDAC and Roundup. And then finally, the MUG facilitates webinars such as the one that you're watching today to document and demonstrate mining workflows leveraging geospatial technology. The MUG has been in existence for around 11 years and is made up of more than 2,000 members. The membership is managed through LinkedIn, and I highly encourage everybody here to go out and join the community. With that, let's take a look at today's agenda. First, I'm going to be giving a brief overview of imagery in ArcGIS. Second, Patrick and John from Luxstone will be showing us how they're integrating drones into their ArcGIS workflows to ultimately drive business value. Then, my colleague Nico is going to be demonstrating the new ArcGIS drone collections, which are an end-to-end -end UAS solution for companies looking to leverage drones. We'll wrap up the webinar with a question and answer session uh, and, and close out the webinar. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, the focus of today's presentations is really gonna be on drones, but I'd like to take a step back and talk about how drones fit into the bigger picture. At Esri, everything starts with the science of where. In mining, everything has a location and understanding the where component of your data is absolutely critical. Our users are integrating dynamic data about their entire operations from IoT sensors, land databases, environmental systems, and much more. And now by visualizing and analyzing all this geospatial data, we can empower understanding, insights, decision-making, and ultimately prediction. And this is what Esri defines location intelligence as. We believe that by utilizing GIS technology, mining companies can realize business value and achieve location intelligence. Increasingly though, imagery and remotely sensed data, such as that from drones, is becoming a part of this reality. We're now capturing image, uh, remotely sensed data from an enormous array of sources. From satellites capturing INSAR data for monitoring tailing stands, to trucks and humans on the ground capturing LiDAR data and pictures for mapping open pit mines. Imagery and remote sensing is pervasive across the industry. Now this represents a number of challenges for our users. First, this is a large amount of data. How do you manage it? Second, how do you analyze this data? and do that analysis at scale? And thirdly, how do you actually share the data with everybody who needs access to it? Now, we all know that GIS provides a modern framework 
for managing all types of geospatial information. And the GIS is also capable of providing just the same framework for imagery, solving all those challenges that I just mentioned about managing, analyzing, and sharing imagery. First, GIS provides a system of record, which is a, man, a way of managing authoritative data. Data is constantly being updated from all of those previously mentioned sources, and the system of record helps you to manage that data. With your data in place, GIS provides a system of insight to perform analytics. Data is just data. You need to actually perform analytics on your data to result in information that can be used to drive business processes. And finally, the system of engagement is all about getting this data and analytics and information into the hand of your business. These three tenants are gonna help you make use of your remotely sensed data, whose use cases are very numerous. The use cases for imagery in remotely sensed data span the entire mining value chain. Here you'll see just a few of those workflows. For example, exploration geologists are using multispectral satellite imagery to identify mineral resources. This is enabling geologists to more quickly discover new opportunities to build reserves. Mine engineers need to evaluate road slopes, widths, and berm heights for analyzing the safety of haul roads. This is ensuring that safety and efficiency in your mine operations is uh, at maximum uh, potential. Drones are reducing the cost and the time to perform such an analysis. Or with stockpiles, we're using drones to maintain accurate inventory estimates, and this is being used to improve business planning and forecasting. And the last example I want to call out is that drones are being used to accurately capture current mine conditions to be compared to mine plans. And this is better informing the mine planning process and helping to execute the mine plan more efficiently. Now, these workflows, they leverage satellite imagery, drone imagery, ground-based imagery, and more spanning all of those different data sources that we discussed earlier. Now, there are a lot more use cases listed here that you can see, but this list is certainly not exhaustive. So you've seen how Esri in the Science of Wear is helping to drive process improvements in the mining industry. Clearly, imagery is embedded in all aspects of mining and GIS is a powerful tool for, uh, for generating value from this imagery. I'd like to invite John and Patrick from Luxstone to show us how they've made use of drone imagery and ArcGIS within their systems. Luxstone is really an ex excellent example of a company who's benefiting from their investment in these technologies. John and Patrick, over to you. Thanks for the introduction, Matt. Um, we have uh, been invited to be uh, part of the webinar today because we have a drone program at Luxstone, and we were one of the first companies to do this in the aggregate space. About four years ago, we made the decision to take all of our aerial mapping in-house, and we used to contract it out to fixed wing uh, contractors. Uh, but we decided to bring that in-house, and we've got some uh, some of that to share today. I put this slide here to show how we used to do it. Luxstone used to use mules and carts and sledgehammers to help with the mining process. And over the years, we've been able to apply technology to do our work better. Luxstone has been around since 1923, and it is a family-owned quarry company. The family is still active today and involved in the day-to-day -day business. We have 28 facilities on the east coast of the United States, and we're headquartered just outside of Richmond, Virginia. Our footprint is approximately Washington, D.C., south to Atlanta, Georgia. Our primary business is Luxstone, the quarry and construction aggregates company, uh, but we also have two other business units, including Luck Ecosystems, which creates biofiltration materials and a real estate uh, development group as well. Luxstone has a history of innovation uh, in the technology area. <clears throat> And I've included our corporate culture here. Like with many companies, 
it's worth mentioning in the context of this webinar. You'll see that igniting human potential is part of our mission and our vision. And the culture here at Luxstone is to inspire and encourage others to become leaders. Back in 2016, I had this crazy idea that we could start doing our mapping and our aerial imagery in-house using drones. I felt the de desire and the, dr the drive um, to change that approach, use creativity to approach how do we get this data better. We tried several things, several things didn't work, different apps, uh, different aircraft. We tried different drones, we even, even crashed a few drones, but it took creativity to really re-envision how we capture this data. It took commitment from our team uh, and from others within uh, the company to use this data differently and to change our process. Luxstone has a history of that risk-taking around technology. Back in the 70s, we started digital ticketing in our scale houses. In the 80s, we automated our plants to allow our crushing facilities to operate overnight. More recently, we've invested in remote controlled equipment and obviously drones. So why drones and how do we use Esri? We have a long history with Esri using GIS technology for over 15 years. We use the software for market analysis, local site specific uh, analysis, as well as exploration work. And as you'll see, we're using mobile applications to store uh, and share and collaborate with our imagery. Why did we choose to go with drones? We chose to start using drones because we have much higher control of the data acquisition. And I mentioned earlier that we used to contract this work to outside vendors. Um, we have drones within the company for everything from safety inspections, marketing, uh, imagery, and video. We're using drones for blasting planning and 3D, uh, traditional 3D mapping stockpiles uh, and other um, you know, mapping applications. We also have some pretty unique challenges with such a large footprint. Uh, one of our sites down just at, outside of Atlanta, you can see on this slide, is about half a mile from the southernmost runway at Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson Airport. You can see in the top picture there, the control tower, uh, and that picture was taken from our site. As you might imagine, uh, this site requires a lot of coordination with air traffic control to be able to safely fly there and legally fly there as well. So who uses Esri imagery and data within our company? Primarily, the engineering teams are using this imagery uh, as base mapping. And we're using this primarily as a tool to share and collaborate with the field. As I mentioned on the previous slide, we acquired a site in Atlanta, Georgia last year, and our headquarters are in Richmond, Virginia. A year ago, we started to look at the mine design and desired some changes. So we used the base mapping imagery, used the design process, and shared that design with the site. Um, you can see in the lower image there that our current state, this is a flight from about a month ago, that the ramp that we designed in the northern part of the pit there has been installed, and there's equipment running up and down the ramp. This tool really enables us to share much more efficiently without as many site visits. We're also using imagery um, with our sites and through mobile applications for critical infrastructure and emergency planning. We're using the base mapping imagery to um, help add context to where our sumps are, um, plant equipment and asset utilities like pipes, pumps, electrical connections, and valves. Several of our sites are near rivers and we are planning ahead for what we would do in the event of a flood. We're also using uh, drone imagery for our stockpile management. Um, 
across Luxstone operations, we have over 1,300 stockpiles. That's 1,300 plus stockpiles across all of our quarries and yards. We measure each of those quarterly and at the same time fly the entire site, but also go through a individual stockpile analysis routine. This process is very critical for timing and relies on a uh, quick flight to acquisition from acquisition to reporting uh, because of the accounting processes involved. I like to use the phrase that at Luxstone we're rock experts and not dirt experts. So we often hire contractors to come in and move dirt to allow access to the rock. Um, in years past, before our drone program, we may use GPS field survey um, or we might use truck counts or other methods to actually count how much dirt was being moved. And more recently, we've used our drone acquired imagery and data to make those decisions. We've also included scheduling drone flights as part of our contracts with vendors to make sure that we're having accurate counts along the way. Two specific projects, we had a discrepancy between the between our company and the contractor. We were able to sit down with real data and talk about the project not being completed. In two specific instances, the project was incomplete and we were able to convince the contractor to continue working. And we recognized over $120,000 in proving savings on having those contractors accurately finish those jobs. In closing here, before I turn it over to Patrick, I do want to share a couple of additional examples here of um, by using our base mapping imagery through web and mobile applications, we're able to collaborate uh, with the field staff across our entire footprint. So Patrick, I'd like to turn it over to you now for a live demo. Thanks, John. My name is Patrick Hess. I'm a GIS analyst here at Luxstone. Having the latest imagery at our fingertips allows us to make better business decisions and helps us with our efficiency when it comes to work. Today, I'm gonna to show just a small slice of how we use our post-processed imagery across several different Esri applications. One of the first things that we do is set up a custom base map group inside of our ArcGIS Online organization. This allows us to use our latest imagery in applications such as Pro, Collector, Explorer, and ArcGIS Earth. Having it set up this way cuts down on the hassle of finding what is the latest image and when it's readily available at our fingertips every time. So once that custom base map is in our organization, we can use it inside of ArcGIS Pro. Here, I set up a really simple project. As long as I am signed into my uh, organization, I can view all of my custom base maps I have set up. Here, I made a, a drilling feature layer that I want to share out with some field workers to get updated GPS points and attributes. In Pro, it is easy to share them out as a hosted feature layer to be used inside of ArcGIS Online organization. Changing just a few settings of this layer in ArcGIS Online, our field workers can now make edits to this layer. When putting the drill layer in a map um, that our field workers can update, we can see those updates in real time in our ArcGIS Online uh, map. Having this imagery being connected to our data allows our workers to make better decisions in the field and in the office. We might be able to catch things that we might not ordinarily could because we have the most up-to-date imagery. One example of how we do this is with utility editing and our workflow there. We can use ArcGIS Online, um, we can use in Collector to capture utility data to send that back to the office. This helps our engineers design better and keep safety a top priority. Having the latest imagery really improves efficiency and really helps with making better business decisions before going out into the field, saving both time and money. Now in the last 15 minutes, we have shown how Luxstone incorporates imagery with Esri products, and we are excited for the future. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Matt, who will introduce a new Esri product. All right, thanks for that. I really appreciate you showing that. 
uh, John and Patrick go ahead and show my screen here. So, you know, it's really great to see the drones actually being used in action, driving real business value within your organization. Uh, you know, I thought it was really good also to see that you've integrated this imagery into all sorts of workflows, even bringing it into the field for data collection efforts. You know, in our experience working with customers, having a high quality base map is one of the most frequently requested you know, features for field data collection applications. People want that most up-to-date base map available to them out in the field at all times. One question I have for you, you know, how many drone flights approximately would you say you fly within a given year? Is it 100? Is it 200? Uh, let's see. It's This is John speaking. We're probably flying uh, in a month when we're doing our inventory process. We're probably flying 30 to 35 flights. Uh, but we do that quarterly, so um, we're probably, probably flying 200 plus flights per year. Okay, wow, awesome. Thanks again for sharing, really appreciate it. So again, John and Patrick showed us that drones have clear value to our mining customers. Uh, and I'd like to now transition to showing you a new product offering that Esri has called ArcGIS Drone Collections. ArcGIS Drone Collections are complete UAS solutions that are low cost, easy to use, and highly scalable for companies such as Luxstone, who you just heard are flying, you know, on the order of 30 to 50 flights quarterly. When you get into that scale, it introduces different challenges, and Esri has created these ArcGIS drum collections to help out in those specific scenarios. These are essentially bundles of different Esri technology that address different needs depending on your company's scale and requirements. And so throughout these next couple of slides in the, in the demonstration by my colleague, Nico, you'll see what those different components are and how they can be used uh, in your drone programs. Principally, the ArcGIS drone collections generate GIS-ready information products from drone imagery. So this includes 2D products, 3D products, in imagery for inspection type workflows. First, you might wonder, you know, why drones as a source of this imagery? There's other places where I can get imagery from, uh, and they might be, you might think that they're easier to access. First, mines demand a higher spatial resolution of imagery than that is than that which is possible with those other different imagery providers. Uh, those different imagery sources fail to offer the fine resolution and the scale that drones are able to create. Secondly, mines are dynamic environments that are constantly changing, requiring high temporal resolution. From day to day, your mine surfaces are changing constantly. Drones enable you to capture those high resolution imagery in high frequency uh, products, and it's a much more cost-effective solution than some of the alternatives. Now, However, embedding drones into your operations is much more than just flying a drone and generating these information products that I'm showing here. And it can be complicated, and Esri realizes this, right? There's a lot that you need to consider, and this is why we've heavily invested in the ArcGIS drone collections that we're gonna be showing you here in a second. You need to understand your drone, the flight parameters, your airspace and ground control methods whenever you're planning a flight. Understanding those, can help you reduce capture time and fly more safely and productively. For an enterprise, you need to manage your fleet of drones and pilots. For example, how many pilots do you have and who's authorized to fly? Are their certifications up to date? And when are they flying? And then once you've flown, you need to process that and manage that imagery. And do you process it in the cloud or do you do it locally? How do you manage high frequency flights and ensure that the data products are both consistent and high quality every time. Managing this will lead to enhanced data accuracy and can reduce your operating costs. Now, these are really common challenges faced by mining companies who are integrating drones into their operations. RGS drone collections ultimately help simplify drone operations by addressing everything that I just talked about. We break it down for you to help you maximize your investment in drone technology and quickly realize business value. ArcGIS drone collections provide enterprises with a complete platform, adding capabilities of flight planning, fleet management, 
in image processing. Now you're probably asking, what does this look like? And you probably want to see the demonstration. But before I hand it over to my colleague, Nico, I just want to take you through the three simple steps in the drone data workflow. So first, it's about planning and capturing. Esri has a new mobile application for iPads to connect to a drone and plan a flight. Here, you're able to use your ArcGIS data in the field for planning those flights. So this ensures that when a pilot goes out into the field, they're able to pull in authoritative data that's being managed by maybe their GIS department or a GIS power user so that they can accurately and effectively plan those flights out in the field. Second is process, manage, and analyze. Esri offers two solutions for creating different those different drone information products that I showed just a second ago. First is drone to map. This product's not new, and some of you might be using this today. It's an excellent tool for small-scale drone programs, individual operators, or users who are working in low bandwidth or completely disconnected environments. However, it has relatively limited scalability, and it requires significant computer resources. Also, it doesn't have those tools for planning flights or managing a fleet of drones. And so that's where we've introduced SiteScan for ArcGIS. So this is a new tool within the ArcGIS platform that Nico will be showing you here in a moment. Now, this is a completely cloud-based tool that's scalable for enterprise drone programs. SiteScan for ArcGIS comes with those additional capabilities that drone to map does not come with, such as fleet management, pilot management, cloud processing, and much more. Now, these are different solutions, and which tool that you'll need, it really depends on your workflow, and that's something that we would be happy to discuss with you. Finally is disseminate and collaborate. This is all about getting information products into the hands of your end users who need the data. So here you're able to leverage Esri's enterprise GIS platform, such as ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, to share data with your entire organization. Too often data is siloed in a business unit or on somebody's local computer, and here you're able to enable anybody to access this data from anywhere, at any time, and on any device. Today's demonstration is primarily going to focus on the two highlighted components I have here, SiteScan Flight Planning and SiteScan for ArcGIS. Again, these are new capabilities of the ArcGIS platform, and they're components of the ArcGIS drone collections. To show you what this looks like, I'd like to invite my colleague, Nico Bonifu, to show you this live. Thank you, Matt. So before starting the demonstration, I'd like to, to highlight that the SiteScan flight planning application for iPad is available today to all our drone to map users in the SiteScan limited edition. And you're able to log in using your ArcGIS uh, login information and use this limited edition um, of the app to collect your data. All our SiteScan for ArcGIS users uh, have access to the full version. Uh, which is uh, offering some deeper cloud connection and fleet management capabilities. Both these versions of the app are compatible with the 3DR H520G drone and most commonly used DJI drones, including Phantom 4 Pro series, M200 series, Inspire 2, and Mavic 2 Pros. Our flight planning app offers seven different flight modes that we divide in three categories. Our area survey, crosshatch, and corridor survey modes are used for areas. Area survey will capture a standard lawnmower pattern, while crosshatch will combine two area surveys at perpendicular angle one to another, and will capture oblique imagery. Corridor survey is our newest flight mode, and is perfectly um, capable of being used for um, flights of long linear features, uh, such as tailing dam mapping. For vertical structures, such as building inspections, you can use our perimeter scan flight mode. Vertical scan, which I'll be demonstrating today, 
is designed specifically for the mining industry. It can be used inside a pit for our geotechnical teams to get high resolution data of vertical faces of pit walls. For inspection and general um, site awareness, we offer two flight modes, panorama flight mode, which captures 360 photos, and our inspection flight mode for manual flight of both video capture and photo capture. So now I'll jump over to my iPad to show you a live demonstration. All right, so here we're in the SiteScan flight planning application on my iPad, and we can see all the flight modes I just discussed. In the upper right of the screen, I can select the drone I'll be using. Today, I'll be planning a flight on a Phantom 4 Pro V2. First, let's plan a vertical scan for our geotechnical team. As you can see, because this app is connected to the SiteScan for ArcGIS cloud, my base map has an overlaid ortho mosaic from the latest flight that was captured by my team, making it very easy to capture up-to-date information and make sure that we're capturing the correct information based on current site conditions. Following the instructions on the left side of the screen, I'll simply define the bottom edge of the area I'm looking to scan. So here, today we're mapping the southwest portion of the pit wall. And I'll just trace the lower edge of the pit. To make it easier to plan this flight, we've introduced 3D visualization mode. Because pit walls typically not perfectly vertical, I will want to input a slope. Here, I'll select my fixed slope mode because we have a constant slope on this pit. But I know I have a slope of 45 degrees, which I'll input here. I want to scan from the very bottom of the pit, so I'll set a bottom elevation of zero feet, and I want to go up all the way to 300 feet. You can see my flight plan definitely updating. You can see that the drone will follow the green lines, flying at different altitudes at a constant distance away from the pit wall. Flight altitudes are automatically adjusted to capture the best data, as well as camera angles are automatically controlled to capture high quality data, which will in turn give us high quality outputs. If for um, safety reasons or airspace restricted uh, reasons, I needed to adjust those flights out altitudes, I'm able to do that right here. I can also choose my offset, which will determine the resolution of the outputs. 100 feet is um, a good, uh, good offset to use to capture uh, imagery at a resolution of under one centimeter uh, while maintaining a flight time uh, that is uh, reasonable and efficient. As I continue uh, down our left-hand menu, I can see that for this site, I have no FAA advisories. If we were flying at uh, Luxstone's Atlanta um, site, we would have an FAA advisory uh, displayed right here, indicating that we are in Atlanta Hartsfield's Class B airspace. From the SiteScan flight planning application, I'm able to directly request a Lance airspace authorization. And in most cases, I'm able to obtain an instant airspace authorization. Once my flight planning is complete, I can save it for future use. If I was ready to execute it, you can see that in the bottom left of the screen, I have a checklist. One of my drone program administrators has mandated the use of a custom checklist for all operators. So any operator within the organization uh, attempting to fly will be required to complete this checklist before executing the flight. These checklists are completely customizable and can be uh, modified for different sites and um, different applications. You can input fields that are simple check marks. You can make those fields required or not. Some other fields may be uh, manual text input here, wind speed, for example, or a drop down. We can add optional fields such as um, a visual observer field here or um, airspace class. Today's flight is an uncontrolled airspace. I could enter my airspace authorization number um, 
to maintain record of that. And all this information will be associated to the flight data and uploaded to the SiteScan for ArcGIS cloud and tied to that uh, information for record keeping. Once that checklist is completed, I now have the ability to fly. See that checklist button in the lower left has now turned into a fly button. And if I were connected to a drone by pressing this button, we would go through automatic aircraft checks that would verify that the aircraft camera battery are all uh, ready to execute the flight safely. Today, Matt's tasked me with capturing an updated base map of our entire pit. So I'll use our area survey flight mode. Matt has given me some boundaries and has uploaded those to ArcGIS Online. Connected to my ArcGIS Online account, I'm able to visualize this information on my SiteScan base map. So using this information, I will now trace out my boundary. Set a flight altitude of 400 feet for this large site. They were mapping about 250 acres. And at the bottom of the screen, we can see that to map these 216 acres, with this specific drone, we're estimating a flight time of 23 minutes. Uh, at this altitude of 400 feet, we expect a resolution of 1.3 um, inches per pixel, uh, about three centimeters. And this flight will capture 386 images and can be completed using a single battery. If I wanted to capture the entire area, we can see that our flight time has now increased, and this flight would require two batteries. This isn't a problem at all. Um, the drone will execute the first portion of the flight. When it detects a low battery situation, it will automatically come back and land and prompt the operator to swap the battery. Uh, once the battery is swapped, the SiteScan flight planning app will prompt the drone pilot to resume the flight, and the drone will continue where it left off. Once the flight's completed, or all your flights for the day are completed, all the images are downloaded to your iPad wirelessly. You can directly view them on your iPad for uh, in-field quality control, ensuring that you've captured um, quality data. Once you verified your data, is high quality, you can leave the field. If you have a data enabled iPad, you can choose to start your upload directly from the field. Uh, but most users will head back into the office where they have a Wi-Fi connection and initiate the upload there. All this data gets uploaded to the SiteScan for ArcGIS cloud for processing, viewing, and analysis. I'll move over to SiteScan for ArcGIS cloud right now and show you what that looks like. So here I'm using a uh, standard web browser using the SiteScan for ArcGIS web app, and I'm on my main dashboard. I can see all the projects that I'm assigned to. And before diving into our pit here, I'd like to show you some of the um, admin functions. We talked about fleet management earlier. All the flights conducted using the SiteScan app are automatically recorded and stored on the SiteScan for ArcGIS cloud. So I can easily access information from all my pilots, all my drones, as well as battery information um, that is tracked for, um, for maintenance requirements, as well as advising us of any battery warnings that may be issued and indicate um, replacement. Here's where I manage all my users, and I manage all my flight data. Here are all the projects that, I'm, um, that are in my organization as an administrator. Let's go over to the Barcelo Lopez pit that we just mapped. Now we can see that I have two flights within uh, this project. Once I go to the flight page, after uploading the imagery, you would first see 
just white dots. These are all the images that were captured. These automatically start processing once they're uploaded. Also, ground control points are automatically detected using computer vision. Our operator or data processor will get an email notification to review that automatic tagging, confirm it, and then continue processing for high accuracy and high quality data. We also offer the ability to process data from PPK or RTK enhanced drones or a combination of that data with ground control points. Once the data is processed, all our users within that project will be notified of the new data. The first data output that you'll see is your ortho mosaic. A lot of you will be familiar with this layout. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have our different layers. On the right-hand side are our measurement tools, which I'll show in a minute. With our layers, we have our ortho mosaic, which is turned on right now, in very high resolution. Uh, we also have an elevation model that is produced. From this elevation model, we're able to instantly generate contours at a set interval. These contours can be generated from the unfiltered digital elevation model or the filtered digital terrain model that is automatically produced and removes man-made objects. We have the ability to, to use a timeline tool to look at change over time. So here we're looking at a flight captured in June and a flight captured in November. And because this data is tied to ground control, uh, it is overlaid within about two centimeters of uh, horizontal and vertical accuracy. Site scan for ArcGIS outputs uh, two types of 3D outputs. Um, here we're visualizing our 3D mesh. This is very useful for general site awareness. It can be used for site orientation meetings, safety planning, and stakeholder updates. Here we can clearly see that we have some erosion issues on this western face of the wall that may need to be addressed. We also offer a web-based point cloud viewer, which allows all our users, even the less technical ones, to access this information. Using some of the tools on the right-hand side of the screen, we're able to conduct some first-level analysis directly on the cloud. For example, we can generate a profile view of the site, visualize elevations across the pit wall, and export this information as a CSV in 2D or as a LAS 3D point cloud. Using the photo inspect tool, we can conduct safety inspections across the site. By using this tool, I'm able to immediately pull up all the photographs that were used to generate this point. These photos can be pinned and annotated and exported as a PDF report. Going back to our 2D view, uh, we also have access to that same photo inspection tool in this view. Um, but today, I'd like to conduct some um, stockpile analysis as um, Luxstone team uh, introduced earlier. So if we want to verify um, and track our inventory, we'll use our volume measurement tool. So we'll simply trace a boundary around our stockpile. And within seconds, we're able to visualize our cut fill net volume and area of, that, um, of this stockpile. I can view this in 3D for more in-depth analysis. By default, the base plane used for the measurement is the 3D base plane defined by the vertices that I use to define the boundary of the uh, stockpile. In this case, our stockpile is against the slope. So I'll need to change 
my base plane to a level base plane, instantly updating my volume measurement. If I want to compare or look at change over time, I can also easily do this by using a previous flight as my comparison surface. So here in blue, we see the current data, uh, and in gold, we see the data from the previous flight. The change is automatically updated in the bottom of the screen. This data can be saved and exported as PDF reports, uh, as CSV reports to track change over time and across multiple stockpiles, making monthly or quarterly reporting uh, extremely easy and consistent. Next, I'd like to show you how we can use this uh, tool for mine planning and quality control. So using the volume tool again, we'll be looking at this western face of the wall. I'd like to see how, how current conditions compare to the mine plan. I'll draw a boundary across the side of the wall. And prior to this, I've uploaded a land XML surface of the pit design. So looking at my volume measurement, this time I'll compare the current conditions to the custom surface I've uploaded, which is our overall pit design. Here directly on the web browser, we are generating that 3D surface and offering a comparison view. We can see immediately and from the field that our lower portions of the wall are closely matching pit design. However, on this middle section, we can see that there's additional extraction available. Same goes at the bottom of the pit, but this is expected. Lastly, I'd like to show you one of our uh, newest additions to SiteScan for ArcGIS, which is our automated haul road analysis tool. Using our haul road analysis tool, our team will simply trace a rough outline of a haul road. And we'll typically trace the entire haul road network of the mine, save it, and then process. Using artificial intelligence, we are automatically detecting edges of the road, automatically detecting the windrow or safety berm. And this will allow us to generate a report and visualize areas um, that are non-compliant in terms of desired crossfall, road slope, windrow height, and road width. I'll let this run. Seems all our customers are deciding to analyze their haul roads at this time. It's taking a little longer than usual. Here we go. All right. So this section uh, that I just ran, so you can see here in blue um, what was detected as the edges of our haul road. Um, and I can turn on uh, different layers. So if, for example, we want analyze, to uh, analyze uh, road slope across this new uh, section of haul road that was just rebuilt, uh, we'll input our tolerances. By default, uh, it was set in this project to be um, any slope over 10% that would be highlighted. Uh, and we can see that on this section, um, a large portion of the haul road is uh, does not fall in that 0 to 10%. Um, If I were to turn on other sections of the pit that have been uh, previously saved, we can see here that on this existing portion of the haul road, uh, our slope is uh, all within our set tolerances.
I also mentioned that we're automatically detecting the safety room. So we detect the toe of the haul road and the, the crest of the safety boom and analyze that height. So I'll input the range that I'm looking for. Let's say in this case, we're looking for anywhere between uh, one and two meters. And we're seeing that uh, for the most part, our uh, windrow is compliant, but we have this section uh, here that needs to be um, remediated. Um, this can be easily shared with our uh, teams on the ground. Uh, either through this web interface or via a PDF report that will uh, give the teams the locations of the non-compliant sections, which they can input into other uh, Esri mobile apps, such as Survey123, to, to go uh, address those sections. So I've showed you a lot of the uh, analysis, uh, first-level analysis features of SiteScan for ArcGIS. Now I'd like to share this data with um, more of my colleagues. Any one of them who has access to the platform is able to export all the data outputs. They might use these in AutoCAD Civil 3D or in MindSight. They can download the outputs or share them from here. For my GIS colleagues, I wanna push this data um, to ArcGIS Online or to my ArcGIS Enterprise Portal. Directly from SiteScan, I'm connected into my ArcGIS online account, and I'll be sharing this information with Matt, who asked me to uh, model the entire pit. I'll just sh share all the outputs and publish them to ArcGIS online account. Matt, I'll pass that on to you and see what you can do with this data. All right, thanks, Dika. Appreciate it. So just to wrap everything up that Nico just showed. You know, he showed us how you can plan and capture. He showed us how you can process and analyze all through SiteScan for ArcGIS, and ultimately he shared it uh, so that way I can access it. So here, what I've opened up is ArcGIS Earth. ArcGIS Earth is a, uh, a no-cost desktop-based uh, GIS tool. It's a you know a globe, and you're able to add all these different layers into it from your ArcGIS organization. And so you'll see here the same layers that I created for Nico to go out to the field and plan that green line and the red line, outlining the areas where I needed a survey to be completed. I'm able to through this application now that he's published that data source, go click the plus sign up at the top left, and find the mesh that he created from the drone that SiteScan processed. Here in just a couple of seconds, now I have a three-dimensional model that's photorealistic that I can use to perform inspections and, and gain more contextual information about our mine. So just like that, I was able to bring in those information products that Nico created. Now, what I'd like to do now is just summarize really quickly what the ArcGIS drone collections capabilities were that you've seen. So it comes with flight planning tools to enable you to leverage your GIS data for planning. Two, you can process your drone imagery in the cloud and the system will automatically scale for you. So if you've got a thousand pictures or if you have 250 pictures, resources will be spun up. So that way you don't have to use your desktop computer and, and you know, have it running overnight or running throughout the day if you've got a lot of processing to do. We create a large number of high quality information products to support your diverse needs and our solution is a complete end to end solution. You've seen today that imagery is driving digital innovation and mining from exploration to rec reclamation and GIS is clearly a critical component for making the most of your imagery. Companies such as Luxstone are realizing the benefits of this, of deploying drone technology into their organization. And then Esri has this brand new solution, ArcGIS Drone Collections, for managing all aspects of, from drone planning to processing to sharing. Uh, again, I'd like to sincerely thank everybody for their time watching this presentation. At this time, we're gonna transition to a question and answer session. If you have any questions, please submit them to the dialogue box, but like I said at the very beginning, I just want to get this out of the way while people are submitting questions. Um, 
you know, one thing that I mentioned at the beginning was I was going to share some resources about the coronavirus situation. So Esri is strongly supporting our users throughout this situation. We've built a coronavirus resources hub page that's available for everybody to access. Our disaster response programs providing no, no cost assistance to our users who need emergency support related to the coronavirus. And maps are helping in a variety of ways that I've listed out here. There's certainly more. And all I ask of you is that if you need any assistance, please reach out, go to these resources that I've linked out here, and hopefully they'll be able to help you or your organization in some capacity. Again, uh, we can start, go ahead and talk about questions. We've got a couple of them in here for uh, John. So uh, John and Patrick. So at Luxstone, how many drones are you operating or do you own? And how many people are dedicated at least 50% of their time to working with drones in your drone program? Yeah, so we have five drones uh, in our company. We have six pilots total, and we do have one full-time person uh, whose primary responsibility is flying. Um, I think also included in that question was, what aircraft are we flying? We're flying um, a handful of different DJI aircraft, but we're also doing most of our mapping with the SenseFly EBRTK. Okay, perfect, thank you. And that sort of segues into another question that I had. So you mentioned a drone that isn't necessarily supported by the mobile application that Nico showed. And another question from somebody, and this one's for you, Nico, they said, I noticed you don't have DJI uh, Matrix 100 support. Could you elaborate on you know, which drones are supported? And if somebody has a drone that's not supported directly, what do you recommend for that person? Sure. Yeah, so we're um, always adding support in our flight planning app for uh, new DJI vehicles. For vehicles that are not supported, like older vehicles, like the Matrice 100, or fixed wing drones like the EB, um, you're able to use the native flight planning apps that typically come with those drones uh, and upload that data directly to SiteScan or ArcGIS um, and process that data. So we, we allow processing data of any uh, geo-referenced uh, aerial imagery. Perfect, thank you. So a question for John and Patrick again. Uh, somebody wanted to know, how are you uploading these UAV or the mosaics into ArcGIS online? So I guess which tools are you using and are you seeing any issues with the amount of data? Uh, you know, it, sometimes imagery can be a very large amount of data and it can cause issues there. Sure, so um, we're actually using ArcGIS server um, to serve our imagery and we're using ArcGIS online as the, uh, to consume and, you know, mesh together different products. Um, we, are, we chose not to use ArcGIS online to host the uh, imagery. Um, we are, so we are using server for that. Um, it is becoming, it's sort of one of those snowballing uh, projects that the more that we fly, the more imagery we create, the more challenges come with storage and, and sharing. So uh, we are planning uh, later this year on doing some significant upgrades to storing that imagery and using uh, some of the Esri tools to better share and store those in mosaic data sets and uh, the imagery server as well. Perfect, thank you. One other question, I think we've got time for just one more before we have to wrap it up. Again, all these questions will be sent out at the end, but uh, this one is for, for Nico. Is it possible to export those mesh models? And if so, what format would those be? Sure. Um, the mesh models are, are processed in um, different formats. Um, you can, depending on the, the resolution you choose, uh, they can um, be exported natively um, to, to the uh, ArcGIS ecosystem. You can also export them uh, as FBX files, as uh, OBJ, um, and as RCM if you're looking to use that data in the Autodesk environment. Matt, I did see one question coming up about uh, one point I failed to address is um, that all your all your data processing and data storage on the SiteScan for ArcGIS environment is unlimited. There was a question about how many cloud credits would have been used for 
to conduct this demo? And so the answer is uh, no cloud credits uh, were used uh, except for, for the portion where I transferred data over to ArcGIS Online. Perfect, thank you, Nico, really appreciate it. There's a lot of questions coming in and I wanna make sure that I reiterate, we'll be sending those out. If you have more questions though, please reach out by email. Again, please join the mug on LinkedIn and participate in the Esri Mining Geonet Forum. A recording and again, answers to all your questions will be provided to all the rest registrants. And all the previous webinars are available at the very bottom link that are there. So if you wanna go watch previous webinars that are in there, please go ahead and do that. With that, I'd really like to thank everybody for attending this webinar and especially thank Patrick and John from Luckstone for their participation. Uh, again, everybody be safe out there and have a great day.